is good. There's a limit to where the suffering should take place, not to break its back, but let it suffer. Why? Because it will be checking itself to make sure it's efficient and doing Allah's work. Otherwise, it's not good. Many a times when I do projects and I see myself struggling in so many ways, oh, I wish I had that million dollars so I could just take this. Something in my mind says, no, Hassan, it's good you suffer. Sweat it out to the point where you may have to rethink your entire move because now the system is double checking you. Is it really worth your effort? And why are you doing this? What is this all for? It's not about the wealth. It's not about spending the wealth. It's about checking oneself and say, is it worth it? Notice there's an inner balance even in the spending of acquisition and giving. How, bad, how beautiful Islam is, subhanAllah. How Allah has created such a, uh, such a, a, a balanced system that while we transact, we bring balance, but the system itself is built with balance. Even in physics and chemistry you study, you'll find all motions and movements are all trying to attain a balance. In chemistry, there's a principle called Le Chatelier's principle. In chemistry, you'll study this. Where when you push an object, the object will move equally as per the force, and then it'll stop. Why did it move? Because it wants to counterbalance the force, to go back to a state of equilibrium. Wow, it's a natural order. You'll see laws of entropy, natural order. Everything is trying to attain an equilibrium balance. You will talk about even chemical equations, you have to balance the equations. If you don't balance the equations, they don't work. SubhanAllah, look how Allah has created a balance system. And Allah says, your ethical principles are also to be balanced. Your vision has to be balanced. If it's not, you will cause damage. So that's simple. Very simple. These columns are built to balance the gravitational force of Earth. If the gravity of the Earth changes, these columns may be inadequate. Simple. Very simple. These columns, the way they're standing right now in this building, they're entirely designed to counterbalance gravity. Is that amazing? Do we think about that? When we walk our feet, the way we move with our muscles, it's all designed to balance. Look at the muscle system. Our muscle systems are devised of two methods. The push muscles and the pull muscles. Only two possibilities. There's no third. And the combination thereof gives us the balance. There's just enough push and pull to balance it. SubhanAllah. All of this, some people say, came by chance. This all happened accidentally. You have to have your head examined. Allah says, وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامَ They are just in between this. They don't overdo it. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاهًا آخَرٌ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَى أَثَامًا They do not call upon another God with Allah because when you call anyone other than Allah, it's an imbalance. Shirk is an imbalance. Kufr is an imbalance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining it. And they do not slay a soul. They don't kill. Which Allah has forbidden except when necessary with justice. Meaning a murderer gets executed. It's balanced through due process. Okay. Otherwise you cannot kill. You're not allowed. Allah says that's the balance. They do not commit fornication. Now why is fornication a problem? Because it's an imbalance. When a person fornicates, what are they doing? Typically, there's two kinds. There's adultery and fornication. Fornication is a person who's committing uh, an indecent act pre-marriage. Adultery is post-marriage. You find both are imbalances. Because when somebody indulges in dating and fornication pre-marriage, they are indulging in something outside of a contract. It's like going into a business with no contract. It's like saying to your friend, come on, give me $500. I'll put $500. Come on, let's do something today. Today, right now, yeah, let's go, we'll go sell something right now. Okay, let's do it. It's fun. I got money, you got money, let's start. It's fun. So you go out on the street, you start selling something. Now you got two objectives. Either you're gonna make money, you're gonna lose money. You lose money, you got a problem. You make money, you got a problem. Because if you lose money, you'll complain, you'll, you'll tell your friend, you caused me to lose. If you gain it, you'll say, no, I did most of the work, it's mine. <laughs> you notice it becomes a problem both ways. Because there's an imbalance. What's causing the imbalance? No contract. When you have no contract, it can go in any direction. Unless you are really, really, really grounded with Allah, which is close to impossible. Because if you were really grounded with Allah, you wouldn't do it without a contract. 
So subhanAllah, you find this is a problem. Fornication is the same thing. You're having fun with a gender with no contract. It's fun, physical. Let's get physical. SubhanAllah, it's amazing how mental mind tells you, go ahead, it's enjoy. Your, your biology is telling you, go in that direction, enjoy. The whole media system tells you that. You go outside, you can't drive on a highway without seeing some scanty dressed woman telling you, come in my direction. <clears throat> Fantasize. All these imbalances. Look at our social imbalance. Look at the divorce rates. 60-70% of marriages are divorced. Imbalance is a serious problem. A majority of our children today are reaching the level where they're smoking weed. Because why? Oh, it's been now made legal. You find all these green uh, places where they're growing marijuana, right? It's an imbalanced system. If you look at the opium trade in Afghanistan, the largest opium trade in the world is coming from Afghanistan. Why do you think our soldiers are there? Make sure that's happening, because that's where the money comes from. Imbalance again. Takathur. But hakum al takathur. Abundance diverts you. Hatta zultum al maqabir till you come to the graves. Why? Imbalance again. So all those Afghani up there, instead of giving them real food, they feed them poppy seeds and they're all stoned and hanging around like a bunch of drunkards. It's perfect. Who cares? As long as I'm getting rich, my jets are, you know, nicely fueled with uh, pleasant uh, luxuries. Who cares about these people? Destroy them. Same problems here. So that extreme <coughs> imbalance in our children today, where they have no spiritual guidance, you find many a children are indulging in drugs. When it comes to dating, oh my God. <laughs> in fact, the imbalance in their mind is when you are decent. <coughs> I just went to recently to a fundraising dinner. I was gasping for air. I have never seen our community so badly dressed in my life than what I saw in that fundraising dinner. It was like, I thought I entered a nightclub. Scanty dressed women with high heels walking around. I said, these are our sisters? We've got a serious problem. I mean, there's one thing, you go to a Western gathering, their women are dressed decently. Our women were to the extreme. It's almost like, hello, all they needed now was a neon light on their head, you know, look here. It, I, I mean, I was shocked. It's an imbalance. Why is it an imbalance? Because we have this deficiency of, of identities that we think that if we indulge in these kinds of material expressions, that somehow we will be happy. Then I get phone calls every single day. Mother's calling me, emergency, my 16-year-old. Emergency, my daughter. I've got couples calling me. My, my husband is doing this. My wife is... Got all kinds of problems. In a day, I probably get 20 calls. And I'm not exaggerating. I've got this problem, I've got that problem. You see, wow. This is astronomical problem. And this is just probably 1% of what's really happening out there because only that 1% probably knows me. Or somebody. Why? There's an imbalance. What's the imbalance for? Allah is not in the center. When Allah is forgotten, this is what happens. So now you see all these people scanty dress. You look at them in the eye, they're just living a fantasy. Oh, I'll walk here and the nice prince will walk by and he'll just sweep me off my feet. You know, rich Lamborghini will come. You know, the mentality of Hollywood. Oh, some handsome young man is going to just come and sweep me off the floor. You're looking in their eyes. Believe me. <laughs> you see it right through their eyes. They're giving the whole story on their faces. And you say, wow, it's there. They just live and they're not waking up because we've forgotten our obligations. Why do these things happen? Many a times in our societies, when we don't have structures to educate, Consistent methods by which to prevent, preventive mechanisms. It's not necessarily proactive in a positive way. Prevention is also a very proactive method. It's a very positive way. Prevention, just prevention. SubhanAllah. Allah says they don't commit fornication. Nor do they uh, commit any of these indecent activities. Because the minute a person does, simple. You know, it's a person who dates. Once they get used to it, it becomes a joke. Because I like her, it was so easy to get her. Or I like him, it was so easy to get him. Let me go for another one. Because this one's getting old now. I found better ones. I was walking on the street, this one looked at me. Oh, I think it's a good option. So you look at another option. Then, you get used to it. So now the system with the web, and with Twitter, and with Facebook, everybody's available. You just have to smile, and somebody reacts. I'm a love. What a world we live in. So now it becomes infectious. You enjoy it. 
because it's nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. <laughs> this one likes me, thinks I'm cute. Oh, I love that. Next thing, the guy settles down, he's in his 30s, 90s to get married. He knows the game is getting old now. <laughs> you know, the club scene is getting old. He starts to find a woman, can't find her because she's so busy with everybody else. So he travels to his own country and finds a nice little village girl. <laughs> right? You think, oh, this village girl will be perfect. She's pure, pure rose, you know, I'm going to get something nice. <laughs> of course, it's also infected there. We're forgetting that the world is all getting infected. But anyway, you bring this nice girl here. She's so loyal to the husband, having children. Every year there's a new child coming, mashallah. Production is moving. The guy can't stop his hands from looking at someone else. You see stories of divorce taking place, six children, husband's still busy. I said, aren't you happy with your six children? How did you get the six children? Well, I thought maybe one more child would make me like my wife. I said to the wife, why did you bring this? I thought maybe one more son, one more daughter, inshallah, will make my husband love me. Hey, you think what, his children are pawns, like, you know, chess game? <laughs> bring one more, inshallah, maybe it'll get better. What do you think children are? They're just products? No planning. The Quran is saying this imbalance, if there is no focus for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expect it. Because you've gone astray. You've done asraf. This is the Quran is saying. Allah says, who shall, uh, Allah says, يُدَعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهَا فِيهِ مُحَانًا Punishment shall be doubled to him, the one who knows and he does it, and he shall abide therein. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَأُولَائِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ How beautiful. Except he who repents and believes and does a good deed, these are they whom Allah changes the evil deeds to good ones. Meaning Allah turns our evil deeds to good ones when we repent. People ask, is Allah forgiving? Does Allah change my ways? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you regret and realize you've done an imbalance and change the imbalance to a balanced method and you give up your inordinacy and your iniquities, Allah says, I will change it. In al-hasanat, yudhibna sayyiat. Allah says, I will wipe off your bad deeds if you make a change. So Quran and Islam and the method of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always is an open door policy, 24 by 7, until we breathe our last, that Allah says, قُلْ يَعِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَخْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all, don't lose hope. Let's hope and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the wisdom to follow this pathway. There's more, by the way, more verses. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they don't witness to that which is false. They don't lie. They don't cheat. They pass by that which is vain. People are talking vanity, showing off their wealth and their money. They pass by it with dignity. They, with kirama, you know. They move away says, no, I'm not interested in this conversation. People sitting around gossiping, they avoid those conversations. People doing wrong things, they avoid conversations. They are constantly looking for ways by which to avoid such indulgence because they don't want to cause an imbalance. That's life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then of course, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Beautiful verse, who say, our Lord, grant us in our mates, in our spouses, and our offspring, the joy of our eyes. Let me look at my children, my wife, my husband, as the joy of my eyes. I should look forward to seeing my, my mate, the one that I spend time with, the one I'm building my family with, and let me look at my children with dignity and love so that I caress them and I hug them. I see children today, many of them deprived of even a hug, deprived of even a smile. Fathers come in into their homes and they are so authoritative that they don't even hug their child. And the child cannot say anything because the father thinks that's the way to be a father. Why? Why not just hug them? Show them the love. What's wrong with hugging them and telling them I love you? Do you realize how beautiful that is? That a child completely changes. I've seen even at wives when I'm working with kids, I'm not a father. But when a child comes and I look at them and I smile, and I look at them and I give them a good comment, they, they, there's a big smile on their faces. It's almost like I made their day. 
and they walk around positive and they're productive. I said, all I did as, a, as an outsider was smile to this child. Imagine how positive this is. Imagine the family when they're positive, right? So this is Hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. And then the last part, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. Make us among the God-conscious leaders. That, in my opinion, is the ultimate prayer you and I should have. To become leaders among the pious, you and I have got everything now. Because if you and I can be leaders among the pious, not among the general society, لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. Wow, we've got it. Now we've got the answer to the ultimate, ultimate, uh, it's ultimate solution to all our problems because we become role models and role models are needed in society to prevent these kinds of indecencies in society. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbana aghfir lana wa li ikhwanina alladhina sabakuna bil iman wa la taj'al fi qulubina ghilla li alladhina amanu Rabbana innaka ra'ufur rahim wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wow. Hassan, thank you, Brother Hassanin, for your intriguing and enlightening lecture, and most importantly, for being sincere and practical lessons. Um, may Allah bless you, your blessing amongst our community, and I was, I'm always, I was fearful that you might go to another community. I hope you will never do that. You are greatly a blessing. Thank you very much. With this, we conclude our Sunday service. I guess not. Oh, there's Dua Arafat, inshallah. Thursday at 5 o'clock at the Islamic House of Wisdom. Uh, with this, we conclude our Sunday service. We thank you for your attendance, and inshallah, we will see you next Sunday. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.